amazing amazing beautiful people as we promised to lisema we will bring the best and the best and the best and today we have one of the best here on the show how can we know unless someone explains to us we are back big and better with the best information that you can trust and rely on and work with to make sure that you're making the best decisions in life uh, that will make you grow up in the knowledge of God and as we walk in obedience with what God wants us to do. So today we have one of the best guys, a friend of mine for the longest, someone that I've known, someone uh, uh, that I've been with for the best of uh, time ever. And Najua Akona information, Mzuri Sana Ntaka Kutupatia Kwa Leo. So let's uh, invite him and then uh, to sitoe pale penye tuko, tubakishe tu hapo hapo. Don't change the station, make it. Alan TV, how can we know unless someone explains to us? Bro, karibu sana man. Asante bro. Uh -huh. Boneface Nyangoli is my name. Sure. Au ya badilisha? Bado na badilisha nikipeleka wapi? Sijui. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a yep. pastor uh -huh. with Buruburu Community Center Church of God Nairobi. Uh -huh. uh, currently, I'm serving as the senior pastor uh -huh. of the church. Wow, last time we were serving as a youth pastor. Yeah, as a youth pastor. Um, associate pastor, mm -hmm. I served in the same church for six years. Mm -hmm. Then I served as an acting senior pastor for one year. Mm -hmm. I've just uh, ended three years of uh, service as uh, the senior pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. In the same church, I'm also a family therapist. Wow. And I'm also a marriage counselor. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I am a mentor to the youth. I do a lot of uh, programs, the youth ministry, um, both in the church and also in society. And that is my major area of calling. Asante sana bro. So as a teacher? Yes, as a teacher. So most of the time you do teachings, teachings and teachings. Definitely, that, that's my calling. Um, God called me to be a teacher of the word of God. At the same time, he added me a gift of preaching. And that is why I'm a shepherd of the flock of God. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. Yes. So uh, I would say we have all that we need in one package here. And we uh, promise you that we also be inviting other people who have the same knowledge in whatever we're looking at. Because we're looking forward into offering solutions to the very, very specific things that we're going through in life. We have people who have the answers to those questions. People who have gone ahead of us. People of the knowledge. People of the wisdom. People of the understanding from God to take us through all this and give us the information that we need. And today Today, we are starting a series on marriage. What a beautiful topic to talk about, man. Amen. Yeah. It is beautiful. It is wonderful yeah. to talk about marriage because marriage is God's agenda. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll dig deeper into marriage. And today we just want to do an introduction of what marriage is. And our brother Bonface Nyangolo will take us through as we ask more questions to just get to understand more and more. Kama uko na maswali pia, make sure ume comment hapo chini nukituma maswali yako. We will take through and read through and see how we can help you on the same. Thank Amen. you so much. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Karibu sana bonfes Now, what is marriage? When people talk about marriage, I know the young are talking about marriage. The old people are talking about marriage. The middle-aged people are talking about marriage. It's marriage, marriage, marriage everywhere. What is marriage, bro? It is important to understand what marriage is. It's also important to understand what marriage is not. Yes. Sometimes and most of the times we are talking about marriage, but we do not talk about what marriage is not. I'll begin by saying or telling us what marriage is not. Marriage is not that which God has not allowed. Put it put it in a layman's marriage. language. Put it in a layman's <laughs> language. <laughs> For example, let me give you an example. Uh -huh. um, a man marrying a man. That's not marriage. A woman marrying a woman. That's not marriage. But they call it marriage. It's not. And the high court have just given them a right of association in Kenya. Meaning that they can form groups. They can come together. They can push their agendas. That is according to them. Yep. And that is not God. Here we stand for what God has said. We stand for what God has written in the Bible. We stand for what is accepted universally as the truth from God. And so in this show, we are not going to propagate what is not of God. 
we are not going to propagate what society, so to speak, is putting right when it's not right. We are not going to accept that which is not of God. And that's why I'm saying there is that, that which society, okay, calls marriage, but in the right perspective, it's not marriage. Marriage is a union or an agreement or a covenant between man and woman. In the simplest form, in the simplest language, in the simplest definition, man and a woman coming together in a union, in an agreement, in a covenant, that is what is called marriage. And marriage has been ordained and instituted and established by God himself. In the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden. When he said it is not good for a man, for to, be the a... man to be alone. And he in... created a woman, not a fellow man. Yes. Mm. In other words, specifically God spoke about the man. In this case, Adam. That is the first primary meaning of that scripture. In Genesis chapter 2. And verse number 18 up to 25. There we get the institution of marriage being established by God himself. He says it is not good for the man. In this context, which man? Adam. In the secondary understanding of that verse, any other man after Adam, it is not good for this man to be alone. And that's why God went ahead and made a help meet. In fact, the Bible says a suitable help meet for the man. So not every woman is a suitable help meet. That's what you're trying to say. Not every? Not every woman is mm -hmm. a suitable help meet for a man. And that's why, uh, no, yeah. um, I I'm talking about a suitable help meet for the man, uh -huh. which means you as Alan, uh -huh. the one you get is suitable, suitable for, me. for you. Amen. In other words, not every woman is suitable for you. <laughs> so said. <laughs> well said, well said, well yes. said. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so in this episode of marriage, uh, we'll be looking at um, uh, the place of uh, the woman in marriage. We'll be looking at uh, the place of the man in marriage. We'll be looking at the place of children the roles they play in marriage. We'll also learn about finances and marriage and how to balance in between. Or we will learn about how um, to resolve conflicts in marriage. At what point is um, um, the woman and the man supposed to come together in terms of uh, resolving that which is a conflict in between. We'll also look at uh, things that comes to destroy marriage. We'll be looking at, at uh, third parties. Uh, third parties in this case, um, I'll be talking about uh, uh, the so-called mashemeji. Mm -hmm. You know mashemeji? Yeah. Alan umeo watu juzi buwana. And hauja kana mke wako, mashemeji wamekutembelea. Yeah. Eh, siwi ni wamekuwa relative jamu. Ya yeah, wamekuwa relative lakini eh. jamii ni wanatakiwa wakuwache na fasi yako na mke wako. Muji enjoy. <laughs> for how long? For how long should that happen? Um, it's not about how long. Yeah. It's about what? You know, the Bible says that the two shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. And so when the two shall become one flesh, there is that aspect of uh, you and your wife knowing one another. The Bible uses the term knowing one another when, when we talk about uh, the aspects of uh, sexual relationships. Now imagine, Alan, you are in a one room, bedroom house. Not bedroom no, house. Bed sitter. A bed sitter. Yeah. A, 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 a one bedroomed house eh, yeah. is, is, is big. Mm. You just married the other day. Umehamia pale umo. Na nyumba yako ni single room. And uh, you need time with your wife. You need time with your spouse. Makuzo ametokelezea. Hapo ndi wanataka kutafutia job. Will you really have that time? 
that humble time so you, with your wife. You have it during the day when they've gone out to look for a job. My friend, you are also supposed to be out. You are so, supposed to be out as a breadwinner to go find something to feed your wife, to take care of your wife, take care of the needs of your wife. Okay, for viewers, tell us more about this. <laughs> is it good for uh, relatives to can just come in immediately you got married and the relatives are in and they're saying, you oh, know, bro, uh, you become part of us, you're a family now, and we can uh, just be here for some little time as you look for a job. Do you think that's a very good ideal thing for you to do as uh, uh, newly married couples? And I believe it's one of the things that we'll be openly talking about it and even inviting other people so that we can share more on the same on that, yeah? Yeah, yes. my brother, and let me uh, be clear on this. Um, I should not be misquoted by saying relatives visiting you. It's bad. It's bad. It's good for relatives to visit. But we should understand one another. We should give each other space that is required. Okay? As time goes by, we shall understand these things better and better. Yes. Beautiful. Now, you've just talked about the introduction of marriage and you've said what marriage is and uh, you've uh, touched on what marriage is not but I know as we continue to get deeper into that to get to know what marriage is and what marriage is not I'll ask another question how do people get married it's another question that everyone wants to talk about and more maybe some people shy away from this how do people get married wonderful um first of all I will want to uh, say that uh, marriage is for mature people marriage is not for boys and girls marriage is for mature people um according to tradition or culture because all of us have found ourselves in a particular culture jesus was brought up in the jewish culture the disciples were brought up in a particular culture and so there are um, certain things that informs when a man should marry or when a woman should get married. And one of them is maturity. And that's why I say that marriage is not for boys, it is not for girls. How should men marry? Number one, once you have uh, discovered that you are mature enough, to get into marriage. And let me also say that marriage is meant to be for a lifetime. It's not a contract. It's not a contract. It's not a contract. It's, it's not, not a, a, let me try thing then if it doesn't work for me, I'll get out and, and try to get another marriage. Place. Yeah. And that's why it's important when I started giving the introduction of marriage to say things that I not marriage. Marriage is not a contract. It's meant to be for a lifetime. And so, these are some of the questions you need to ask yourself. Am I ready, Alan, to get married? Okay. Now, you identify a spouse to be or a girl that uh, you are affectionately being drawn to her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you get to know that this is the direction God is leading me, to. and this the girl or the woman that god is leading me to uh, now you you just don't sit praying <laughs> praying is good i i love praying i'm i'm i'm, I'm prayerful very prayer myself. Uh -huh. but uh, god will not drop this woman from heaven and mm. tell you alan go to kencom but he made Adam idea. sleep. He made Adam sleep. Then from Adam, he created Eve. And then Adam wakes up. And then the next thing is Eve around him. Were there women those days? I don't know, bro. There were no women. Because Adam was the first man to be created. Oh, that's right. And then when Adam was created, God went forth. So what are you trying to say is Adam had no, had no choice? Yeah, Adam had no choice because uh, there were no women. <laughs> It's okay. uh, you know, we, we, we are told of animals and all other creations that were there. Yeah. And so when, when, when Adam was given the ability to name, the ability to name, so he named every animal, gave all those animals their names. And, and Adam will, uh, you know, find himself uh, doing a lot of stuff in the garden, doing a lot of things. And uh, Adam finds himself maybe tired, so to speak. 
among the animals and every other creation that was there then, there was no suitable helpmate. There was none. And that is why God says it is not good for this man to be alone. To be alone because he comes back tired, he is weary. He needs somebody to support him. He needs somebody, you know, to walk with him on this path of life. And so I presume that there were no choices for Adam. And that is why God went ahead and put him to deep sleep and did a surgery and made Eve out of him. A bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. That is what Adam said. So this is to people, you don't pray, as he said, you don't pray for God to bring this person around. You go out and look for. Definitely. First of all, you, you know, you, 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 you pray, you, you seek the face of God concerning uh, that aspect of uh, direction that you are taking. Okay. I'm not ruling out prayer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You have to have everything in perspective of prayer. Look at David, David, a man after God's own heart. Everything that David did, the Bible says he sought the face of God. The face of God. Okay? Yep. So it's important to seek the face of God concerning that aspect of direction that you are taking, marriage. But again, you don't wait there. You go where girls are. <laughs> okay? You go where girls are. <laughs> you go find them. You go find them. Uh -huh. You they, don't stay there. But nowadays they'll come to you. Girls will come to you. It doesn't matter whoever comes first. Uh, whether you go there or they come first. Whether they come, whether you go there. Yeah. As long as you are doing things the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, once you have gotten this girl, you know, we, we have a problem in the lives of young people today because um, we believe that uh, Weddings are everything. Mm -hmm. Weddings are not everything. Because that's what another question I really wanted to ask you. But now that you're touching on uh, it, and that's where I'm go. going. Yeah. Because after you have identified that this is uh, the girl that I want to marry, and uh, you are at peace with it, the first step that you need to do, agree. That aspect of agreeing between the two of you that is a covenant enough. Okay? Yeah. But you just don't move into one another without letting the concerned persons know. For example, we have our parents, the parents of the girl and the parents of uh, the man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so both parents must be put into picture. Consideration. Yes. You need as a man, you need the consent of your parents. You need the consent of the uh, woman's Parents. parents or okay? guardians yes or guardians the same thing will apply on the other side and once you have received this consent it's also important to let your pastors know the pastors of the girl they should know that uh, this is happening your pastors alan should know that you have gotten yourself you know a help me a help me or in an engagement and then after that your pastors can actually guide you on what should be done on what should be done now your pastors depending on how you want it be done again you, your pastors can decide to bless you on a sunday morning during the service as long as there are witnesses on the girl's side witnesses on your side, side yeah. and the parents have given approval the pastor here is just a representative of God here on earth who will pray for you on a Sunday during the service and declare you husband and wife. wife. But what we see today is that uh, there is a lot of competition going on, a lot of uh, doing things the way somebody else did them. For example, I did a wedding of uh, um, a million shillings. And so you look at that as a yardstick. You mm -hmm. want to do a wedding of a million shillings, you actually can do a wedding without money. Okay. You mm -hmm. can do a wedding without money. Sure. And uh, people are falling prey into this. Okay? Yeah. People are falling prey into this trap.
because they think that uh, weddings are everything but according to me what i believe is what god honors is the agreement between you and your wife to be i have two questions to ask you the first question you said you know uh, if the uh, parents agree parents on both sides agree we have instances where parents the ladies okay uh, parents don't agree that this man should get married to their uh, their daughter and the other on the other side uh, the man's parents say uh, this woman cannot be married to our daughter uh, how do you deal with that and then the next question will be you say according to you you don't believe that the wedding is the ultimate way of someone getting married uh, as long as this an agreement and the third parties are involved first god is involved the pastors are involved their witnesses people can be prayed uh prayed for at any instance and they start their marriage as long as it's been blessed by those people or uh, who are with them or oh, what you take on that you know let me start with the last one sure um you know we we we, we take things very far we take things very far and uh, we end up having young people in the church who are afraid so to speak of getting marriage of of getting into marriage okay yeah because we have taught them that for you to get married you you must have a, a, a wedding that is expensive my brother look into the bible jesus did quite a number of miracles he went to funerals raising people who are dead okay uh-huh. he did ministry raising the sick but i only find one instance, instance in the bible that jesus was involved in a wedding in, a wedding, in cana mm-hmm. in cana yeah in the gospel according to john and that's what many people use and justify the issue of people wedding you know in fact yeah scripture says that he had been invited, invited together with his disciples and his mother was also in attendance right sure now that tells me that the institution of marriage what matters most is the agreement between the man and the woman who are involved who are the primary uh, characteristics fantastic uh-huh. that is what matters to me and so we should teach young people that once you have found somebody that you can uh, enter into this institution of marriage together and you have agreed and uh, the parents have given consent please go to your pastor and get more advice or instructions from your pastor what if the parents don't consent because there are instances where parents don't consent completely yes that is where i'm going I recently dealt with another case whereby uh, in fact a young man who had uh, found himself a lady uh, postponed marrying twice because the mother of the girl or of the lady was not in consent was not agreeing for reasons well known to her okay yeah um we went ahead and uh, uh, even talked to the pastor of the lady to intervene but uh, the lady's mother was very adamant we tried to use every means possible this is a true story every means possible to have this mother consent that this uh, man gets into marriage with her daughter but she refused now in such a case my dear brother marriage is between two people who are mature so it's and good they have made their decision so what are you trying to say over here uh, in this case if the lady truly loves this man they should get married they should. whether the parents are consenting or not they should go forward and get into the institution of marriage when they be when this lady be disrespecting the uh, the mother's uh, will and all that first Sure. there have been measures into measures being put into place uh, to try and uh, talk to the mother or to their parents concerning this too okay sure and the parents have been talked to not once maybe not twice 
maybe not three times. Okay. There have been people involved because, uh, you know, there will be an aspect of uh, maybe tell us the reasons as to why you are not allowing your daughter man to get married to your daughter. Okay. We know from scripture that uh, the born again should not get married to the unborn born again. again. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because we do not have a relationship. But if these two people are born again, why not? These two people are Christians. Mm. Give us another reason. If you tell me that uh, my girl cannot get married to this man, so and so, because he is not born again. I listen to that. If this man is involved in things like occultism, in things like witchcraft, in things that are not, uh, you know, biblically sound, then even myself, I will not agree my daughter to be married to such a man. But these are people who are straightforward. Okay? They are Christians and maybe to some level leaders in their respective churches. What other reason are you giving? If there is no valid reason, my dear brother, these two agreeing to get into the institution of marriage is not um, disrespectful to their parents. Okay, what do you think are some other reasons? Now you've uh, validated some of the reasons to why the two cannot get married. And what do you think are some of the other reasons that vague reasons that parents will give for their daughters or sons not to get married to? Poverty. Some of yeah. Poverty. I had a problem when I was uh, getting into marriage uh, right in the year 2004. That is your personal story? My personal story. Uh -huh. uh, before I got married to my wife Lydia, there were uh, several, uh, uh, I call them envoys. Mm -hmm. Sent uh, to you. Sent to me. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah. Do you know what they were telling me? Uh -huh. that, uh, don't marry that girl. Why? Because the family is extremely poor. Uh -huh. They'll go ahead and even narrate to you how the environment looks like. They told me there is no toilet. Hawana hata nyumba. So, kama hawana nyumba hata chwa hawana. There is no toilet in that compound. There is no house in that compound. The parents of this girl are not even working. You know, and, and they were saying, this girl smells poverty. I listened to them. And I told them, that's the choice I've made. That's the girl or the lady that I have decided to marry. And my choice is final. Since 2004, I've lived with my wife till today and God has blessed us with three boys. One is a, a candidate this year mm -hmm. uh, sitting for his uh, KC, KCSE. The other one is sitting for his KCP this year and the other one is uh, in um, you know the, play, uh, the, the PP2 uh, uh, level of uh, the kindergarten academics. Thank you. So, oh, to you, uh, you know, parents will always want the best for their children. Very true. And the parents always guard their children against that anything that they think will be uh, of no, you know, uh, anything that they think will not be good for them, like will not develop their children the way they want. So yes. every parent has a vision for their children. Yes. And I believe that's the reason why most of them will come in and say, wow, don't get married to that family because they are poor. Don't get married to that family because they are uh, uh they have all those occultic occultic things that you mentioned about mm -hmm. which is a valid reason to you for your son or your daughter not to get married in that, yes. in that family and uh some will say very other funny things and all that there is always a history behind whatever they are doing as a christian do you think it's good for us to follow some of those histories especially you mentioned about poverty yeah their parents are not working uh, their people don't have a place and then we come to another thing that is really really eating us up and this thing is on tribalism you know, there are people say Luyas cannot get married with Kikuyus. Kikuyus cannot get married with the Luos. Luos cannot get married with the Luyas. And all these other things because of the, you know, pre-assumed uh, pre -assumed characteristics of those people. Do you think that's a valid reason for someone not to get married to uh, the other person? My brother, 
Alan, that was uh, another reason that I was going to give. Um, Martin Luther said that, uh, do not judge me by the color of my skin. But judge me by the content of my character. Okay? Sure. Um, I've had several cases of, uh, you know, uh, people saying that uh, we cannot marry from this community. And uh, they will give various reasons. Um, sorry to say, uh, friends um, who married from a community that uh, I won't mention, only after some time, one of them comes and finds the house completely swept. Yani mefagiliwa haina chochote mpaka kijiko na kifagio. Okay? Mm-hmm. A similar scenario happened uh, while I was still in Nakuru. Another friend, the same thing happened. But you know, we cannot use two or three or four or ten cases um, to describe a particular community. I believe that there are people who are good. I believe there are people who are truly born again. Sure. Remember, my brother Alan, we are talking about marriage on a Christian perspective. Sure. Okay? Yeah. We are trying to uh, see between what the Bible says, says and what people say. And what people say. And so what people say is not our basis in this uh, topic of marriage. Yep. We are strictly going by what the Bible says. says. Yep. There is a lot of stereotyping that I, I will not want us to go into. Okay? Now, when when you say that uh, I cannot marry from this particular tribe, uh, tribe uh, to me, that's out. That's something that I cannot affirm. Okay? We are supposed to intermarry. I, uh, from Vihiga County, I can marry from, uh, you know, Central Province. I can marry from Eastern Province. And uh, for example, in the church that uh, uh, God has given me the responsibility to, to lead, I have all uh, uh, this. I, I have uh, people from Central, people from Eastern getting married to people from uh, Kakamega, getting married from people uh, uh, of the Higa and, uh, you know, send, uh, uh, Nyanza and ETC. We have these um, um, across culture uh, aspect of families in our church. And so, that is another reason that people put across as to why uh, uh, my daughter or my son cannot marry from this community, but I don't support that. I find it to be out. It's not godly. It's not biblical. Some of you will say, you know, Abraham, Abraham gave very specific instructions to the servant to get where to get uh, the son uh, Isaac's wife from. And they'll say, you, don't you see even this won't happen this way. So as a parent, uh, as a parent, I have the right to dictate where my son gets married to and where my daughter gets married to. Now that's according to you. And uh, you <laughs> <laughs> remember the times of um, uh, Kina Isaac, mm-hmm. the times of Kina Abraham are not our times today. Mm-hmm. Times have changed. Seasons have changed. My friend, try. Your son will tell you, Baba, Okay? Because we are dealing with mature people. This uh, your son, who is uh, 18 and over, uh, maybe he is in his 30s. How do you make a choice for him? Okay? I know that uh, there are instances whereby aunties are talking from where I come from. Uh, you, you are sent to go and uh, deliver a particular message to auntie. Kumbe auntie has been prepared early. Akutafutie mutu huko. Eh? Mm. Kule kwa auntie. Mm. You see, uh, we know those things are happening. But is that the will of God? We call them planned marriages. Planned marriages. Be- because now you are telling me to marry somebody that my heart is not inclined to. Definitely those are the marriages that don't last. Now, there, there are cases where pastors are planning those marriages to you as a pastor. You see this, uh, this, uh, you call, okay, you call them spiritual sons, eh? And my spiritual son, X. <laughs> Why are you laughing on that? 
It's what we hear every place uh, in every place we go to. Mm. I know there are those guys that you're mentoring, and some people use that privilege to call them spiritual sons and spiritual daughters. You say mm. spiritual son X, I see your character is too good, uh, and then see you can match with the uh, spiritual uh, spiritual daughter. Hey, uh, why? And you guys can be good, and that because it's from the pastor. Mm. This is from the pastor. This people believe this is from God. No, no. Now we will talk more about this when that time comes when that time comes <laughs> so is it right for a pastor to bring together these two people because there are very many marriages but again there are some that are good there are some that are not doing well there are very many yes. uh, breakups and divorces in still we, the same thing we yeah. cannot rule out that uh, uh such marriages exist uh do not work yeah uh, personally i know of uh, a couple that got introduced by a friend they introduced uh, um one to another by a friend and uh, that marriage is doing well up to today of of course uh this happens i know i cannot rule out they do happen but again what we need to ask ourselves is um you yourself as alan yep where is your heart okay I believe that uh, for people to get into marriage is all about decision and Making. choices. Yep. Okay? Yeah. Decision and choices. What decisions are you making? Are you just waiting for your pastor to make decisions for you in the name of marriage? Are you just seated there waiting for your pastor to make choices for you? Now, I've been with young people since uh, 2013 as a mentor, as a guide, as a compass. But my encouragement to the young people, whenever I meet the young men, I encourage them to get into marriage because marriage is a good thing. It has been ordained by God. It's an institution that has received its blessings from God. Okay? Sure. So mine is to encourage them and to show them how good marriage is, how pleasant marriage is. And I am teaching them and encourage them from the Bible basis, the Bible concept, and giving them biblical principles that will guide them into making right choices. Thank you so much. I want to ask you another question. People marry for different reasons. Mm -hmm. What is the biblical perspective or purpose of marriage? Um, one is procreation. Mm -hmm. Procreation means that uh, the husband and the wife will know each other. Okay? And in a layman's language, fill the earth. <laughs> In a layman's language, feel, feel the earth. Procreation is uh, one purpose of marriage. Another purpose of marriage is that um, there is that aspect of fulfillment. The wife is supposed to fulfill the needs of uh, the husband. The husband is also supposed to fulfill the needs of the wife. There is also the aspect of love. Love should also drive this marriage into being. It is an ingredient into marriage. Okay? So fulfillment, love, and procreation are the purposes and the major purposes of uh, marriage. Another one is complementing one another. You know, um, when these two come together, they form one flesh. And after they are formed one flesh, they complement one another. I have my weaknesses. My wife comes in with her strengths to complement me. She has her weaknesses. And in those areas that she has her weaknesses, I come in with my strength to complement her. And together we form a very formidable family that um, is, uh, you know, pleasing God. And let me say that uh, in most cases we go out looking for perfect marriages or perfect families. Um, in this case, 
I submit to you, my brother Alan, and uh, those who are watching us and following us on this channel, that uh, we do not have perfect and, uh, you know, uh, very well furnished and organized marriages and families. The mm -hmm. word here is perfect. It's only God will perfect us when he comes to take us. So what you're trying to say is we are two rugged people coming together to complement the ruggedness of each other. Yes. So when we get together, we're feeling the ruggedness. Then we're becoming, growing to become complete as we wait for the second coming of Christ Jesus. Exactly. So another thing, another thing, if I heard you well, you say, you know, uh, the purpose of marriage is procreation. There are marriages where there are not children. Yes. I know we'll talk about children and family, children and family uh, on a lighter stage. But uh, what, what happens here? Because uh, where I come from, and I know where you come from too, children are so much valued in every marriage. Mm -hmm. And I get in a marriage, and then there's no children in this marriage. You are allowed to get another wife and try and see if <laughs> uh, you can sire with her because there should be the continuity of the, of the family name, you know. The lineage should continue. It cannot stop with me or you, either way. Is, so what's your take on that, and what's the biblical take on that? Is my, it my, right? My, my question would be, is uh, that what the Bible says? I know, you know, we, we are dealing with this aspect of uh, life and union called marriage from a biblical perspective. Sure. Um, the proponents of uh, such things will tell you of uh, Abraham and uh, um, Sarah. Sure, people bring in after, yeah. after quite a number of years. That or, length of time, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the promise of God is not being fulfilled. Not being fulfilled. Uh, Sar Sarai comes to Abraham and tells mm. Abraham, get yourself into Hagar. And yes. uh, wherever Hagar will mm -hmm. be, will be my, uh, yes. my, my child. Yes. And we see whatever happens. But does it mean that God failed to fulfill his promise? Was that the voice of God or the voice of Sarah? That was the voice of Sarah. No. And those are the voices that are speaking around us. Should we follow the voice of men or the voice of God? The ideal is follow the voice of God. Yes. Yes. We ought to follow the voice of God. Now, scripture records that children are a reward. Okay? Children are a reward. A reward. And that is why whenever we pastors um, declare you, Alan, mm -hmm. and your spouse to be husband and wife, we will also go ahead and pray for the seed of the womb okay we'll pray for the seed of the womb children are a heritage from god a reward thank you from god. Uh, thank you for that so shortly can you tell us what marriage is not because we are living in a world where anything works for anyone as long as you're happy they say as long as you're happy with it do it so what is not marriage you've heard of this thing called come we stay yes now that's not marriage that's an english word Come, come, we stay means, uh, in, you know, people came together without a commitment. Uh -huh. What if they committed themselves and they came together? No, that's not marriage. Okay? You, you know, you, you get a girl outside there and then she comes, uh, spends a weekend and goes. Uh, the next weekend she comes uh, with uh, T-shirt and Billy. The next month is, she's pregnant. The next month she's pregnant. And that's how she stays. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. To me, that's not marriage. Uh -huh. Two. Number two. There is marriage that uh, people call marriage. Uh, for example, these things of uh, the LG, uh, LGBT, LGBTQ, you know, those things. Eh? Mm. Uh, a man loving a man, then they come together to stay. That's not marriage. Okay? A woman kissing another woman, falling in love with her, and then living together, that's not marriage. A man making love to an animal, that's not marriage. Now, these are things that the Bible, right from the old covenant up to the new covenant, has, forgive, has, has forbidden. And so, anything that is not a union between a man and a woman, Anything that is not a commitment, anything that's not a covenant between a man and a woman, and mature, mature people who have decided to come together and form a union called marriage, 
anything outside that is not marriage thank you so much uh thank you so much uh, pastor bonfis nyangolo things are getting hot and hot and hot and hotter and i promise you it will be much hotter than you can feel it now i know uh, you're getting the goosebumps because hmm, but it's okay we're here to help you and help each other and you're here to help us to to be the best people even as we walk in obedience with that which god wants us to do that's all being a brother's keeper yes we must be we must be. It's a command. It is, my brother. Uh, thank you so much, bro. Uh, keep on watching. Keep on commenting. Subscribe. And uh, just make sure you also touch on the bell so that you'll be notified of every video that we upload so that you won't miss anything. And we said uh, we're talking about marriage. So anything about marriage for the longest that we can, as long as people stay together and committed for that thing, because it's not a contract, as you said. It's not. It's a lifetime commitment. For lifetime. It's not a we stay till death do us part yes yeah, not that come we stay it's not a come we stay you don't try it out we don't try you do it you do it with the understanding you of what you're doing enter into marriage with understanding of what you're doing of what you're doing and you say it's not bestiality it's not and you say it's not lesbianism it's not lesbianism it's not gaze <laughs> it's not it's the very purpose that god intended for to adam he created eve exactly and to alan will be I don't know. Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Keep on subscribing, guys. Amen. We'll get it hot and hotter. And I, I assure you, you will learn more. Amen. From this. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, sir. See you next time. God willing. Same place. Thank you. Same time. Thank, <laughs> thank you. God bless you.